by the end of this video, uh, you're either gonna love me or hate me based on how I zero guns because I'm fairly rough shot with it. So uh, if you're like a precision detail oriented person, I apologize to you because this probably isn't for you and I'm sorry for bringing you here. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. We're out here today to do some zeroing. This is an 18 inch upper I got from uh, Focus uh, Shooting from John over there, Jonathan over there. Uh, good dude. So excited to zero this today. I got a couple different ammos we're gonna run in this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zero it uh, off my, my training ammo, which is uh, PMC 55 grain. Uh, so we're gonna zero that first. And then uh, after that, I'm gonna try the different ammo. We're gonna see what kind of what kind of groups we get. So uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Here we go. Let's see how this goes. I think I threw that last one. Let's see how that goes. So I had a big piece of paper down there and uh, this was previously on a 16 inch gun and um, you know, uh, could see the bullets hitting the berm, but didn't hit the paper anywhere. So we're gonna have to recalculate a little bit. I'm gonna get on paper and then I'll come back. Okay, so we're just going crank way off to the right. Um, got it much in it better in at 25 I'll show you some pictures of the groups here okay so at 25 right here was my first group of three okay this is just a b8 so as you can see I was way way over I just cranked it a bunch I didn't count I just cranked it left got it to here for the second group right and then my third group is right here okay one two three that was my third group of 25 whatever uh, got, got it worked in and um, so now we're here to to try again at 100. So let's see how it goes. This is why I, uh, I used the 40 round today because I knew this was gonna be a process. Zeroing is always a pain. Yep, I hate zeroing. Oh, ho, ho. the staples on my target just came out so it's blowing in the wind so We'll shoot a different one. If you're like, why is he standing up using a tripod? Well, because I just got it. And I really want to try it out. And so I'm seeing how it goes to zero off a tripod. It does feel pretty sturdy, uh, by and large. Um, I've been a fan of it so far, so we'll see. I mean, I feel pretty, I feel pretty locked in here. I don't know, I'll shoot one more. I think I see those. I think those are all gonna be high. Let's, uh, let's go take a look-see. These three or so right here were my first group at 50. And then so one, two, three, four, five. I think I fired six. I have to look at the footage, honestly. So at 100, kind of all over here. So that's a pretty terrible group. We'll see what we can do. Okay, we're gonna try seated with the bipod. See if I can get a better group.
honestly, I felt pretty good about that. Um, I think my group's gonna be a little high. I don't know, let's see what happens. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So that's, I'm realizing now that I didn't bring a tape measure. <laughs> but I don't know, but that's a very precise measurement of like two inches, tip to center to center, maybe two and a half, something like that at 100 yards. So about two MOA. Um, I'm probably gonna drop the dot, um, I don't know, two or three clicks, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, that's where it's at. I'll try to slow down here. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the gun, the ammo, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna go down three clicks. We'll try again. Okay, well, not much better. So here, I shot the same target, and I, <laughs> I thought I marked my ones from last time, but apparently not. So, uh, I know this one was not here. I'll have to review the footage here. Two, three. I think last time I was maybe that far apart. Let's use that precise marker measurement. Yeah, so I think last time, my spread was here, those five. So here I think it's one, two, three, four, five. So no better. I might come down a click here, but by and large, I'm probably just gonna live with that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can get much better. Must be me at this point. So we're gonna try some of the ammo, other ammo, and we're gonna see if we can if we can tighten that up. But I think for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that as my zero. This is how I zero guns, so if you're like, oh my God, that's an abomination, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so first up is AAC 556 69 grain HPBT hollow point boat tail. I can only assume. Uh, 2,900 feet is what the FPS is on this. I don't have a chrono, so I don't know. That's probably not gonna help us too much. But uh, I don't know, here we go. We're gonna put like five or six of these in and then we'll see how it goes. Very fancy, fancy round. shoot all these at the same time so I'm gonna make notes about where I'm actually shooting them so that uh, you know I can come back to it top left all right here we go
angles felt pretty good. That left, the last one, I might have shanked a little, little left. But other than that, that, that felt pretty good. Okay. Next up is Frontier. This is Frontier 223 Remington, 68 grain boat tip hollow point match. Okay. So we will see how these fare. That one was uh, a 69 grain. So these are a grain less, I guess. This is just Frontiers, or from Frontier Cartridge, it's a Hornady round. Hornady brand, no? I don't know, the bullet might be a Hornady bullet. Let's try it again. Next up, we have the 556 NATO 7070 grain TMK something match king. I don't know what T stands for. This is also from uh, it's a Sierra bullet, also from AAC. It's AAC the rest of the day here. 2700 uh, feet per second, allegedly, supposedly. These ones have a very cool little green tip, so that's fun. Next up, we have a AAC 75 grain boat tail hollow point. That last one I might have shanked a little low. All right, and last up, we have a 77 grain 556 OTM open tip match. I can only I can only presume. That was, I shank that. I think I have one flyer on that last one, or that, that very first round was a flyer. Okay, let's go down and uh, see, how it, see how it all turned out. I'm, I'm actually super curious. These are all the first rounds I've ever shot out of this gun. So, uh, maybe I should have done my accuracy testing after a couple of rounds. I don't know. I don't do precision rifles that often. So, uh, we'll see what's going on. Also on here, just so we're aware, um, this is a, uh, Sandman K-Can. That's what I have mounted up there. And, uh, under the hood is the Sandman, uh, flash hider. Not the Sandman, but the dead air flash hider. Um, and then this is a, uh, one to six from primary arms is what this is. Uh, so, you know, 
The mount is also from Primary Arms. Uh, mount is pretty solid though. So I, uh, I don't know. There's all, you know, there's always a variety of factors of what could be going in here, right? Could be me. Could be all the stuff. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm trying to, sh I'm shanking it when I'm pulling it. So let's go down, let's take a look, let's see what, what's happening. Okay, so we came back to the studio to film this part because uh, I did not have a tape measure when I was out there in the range. And uh, that just wasn't very helpful for what we were trying to accomplish here, right? When we're comparing different ammos and different groupings. So uh, we're gonna start kind of worst to best here. So the first one up was the 75 grain um, 5.56 BTHP boat tail hollow points, okay? And for these ones, I had a four and a half inch group. Uh, this was by far the worst one. Um, for whatever reason, uh, the gun just did not like this. Like my PMC stuff did better than this, which I think was coming in around two to three inches um, at that distance. Uh, I will say later I went out with the PMC and shot at 300 and it was like a C or a D sized steel plate out at 300 and I mean it was it was like a rail gun. It was pretty consistent. That, that, that got boring. I tried to shoot some of the smaller ones. I think they had a 12 inch circle plate out there and I could hit that and then it took a little bit of work but I got I think what was a 10 inch circle plate. I think that's what it was uh, out there at 300. So you know with the PMC I was able to do that. I don't know if I'd be able to do that with this. Like this is pretty, this is pretty bad. So that one's a definite no-go for me, for this gun currently. Like I'm just, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy that one anymore. Next up, we have the 77 grain TMK. So that is this one, 77 grain TMK. And uh, this one was better. So this one had 2.75 inches. Uh, so from this top one right here to this one down here. And uh, if we discount this flyer, if I discount this one down here, uh, we're looking at one and seven eighths with this little group of four right there. So uh, that one, you know, not bad. Um, you know, maybe I could, I could shoot that one some more, but I would say that's, you know, that's, that's not so bad, right? Uh, the next one here was the 77 grain BTHP, oh no, did I mislabel this? That was the TMK, BTHP, oh no, hold on. So the next one, I think, now I, might, I mislabeled my uh, thing here. This says 77 grain BTHP, uh, I have a 77 grain OTM. So one of these two is mislabeled. But one of them, I'm pretty sure it's this one, it's a 77 grain OTM. Um, this one did about two and a half inches, uh, you know, spread. So again, not great, not terrible. Um, you know, the, the TMK was right about, right about there. It was at 275. If I discount the flyer, it was doing a little bit better. But, you know, I, I don't know, two and a half, not, I, I want, I want that, that one inch. I want that, you know, again, now I'm shooting seated off a bipod. I don't have a lead sled, you know, so I mean, I'm, I'm doing the best I can and that, that all affects it, right? Could just be that I suck too. I mean, that's, that's always an option. The next one was a 69 grain hollow point boat tail. Uh, 69 grain hollow point boat tail. And this one, again, this is about two and a half inches. Okay, my lowest one's down here, right? My highest one's up here, so about two and a half inches. Uh, so not, not great, not terrible. Um, you know, it seems kind of the average with a lot of the AAC stuff. So the current winner is the Frontier Cartridges rounds uh, using the, the Hornady Bullet. This is, this is the current winner. And this one I ended up shooting two different groups uh, just to see because I had the best group. So then I shot it again to see if, if I could, you know, get pretty reproduce that. So I don't know which one of these I shot first, but so this one is 1.75 inches. And if I discount this top one here as a flyer and I just take these four, I'm at 1.5, uh, 1.5 inches. 
So 175 at the worst, 1.5 at the best. Now the other one I shot is even better. So the other one is, and this has, uh, looks like seven or eight rounds in it. And this is one and a half uh, inches at the worst. And if I discount, again, if I drop these two as kind of flyers out here, now I'm sub MOA in with, with this group right here. So, um, you know, that, that, that's not bad. Now, of course, of course, this one was the most expensive, right? I think all of my AAC rounds were like 60 cents a pop. I think one of them was 80 cents a pop. And I think this Frontier cartridges, this is, was sitting more around 80 cents uh, a round. So right now, you know, this is, this is my go-to. I'll probably buy some more of these. I'll probably buy a couple other rounds and just see if I can find something. Again, I really want that, that sub MOA cartridge. Um, right now, this is, this is probably my current winner because I wanna have a little bit of premium on hand in case I need to, you know, shoot far accurately for whatever purposes you would need to do that for. So anyway, that has been the end of my little zeroing and ammo testing trip. I hope that you had a good time and I hope that you enjoyed the cavalier cowboy nature of how we zero here. Do brave deeds and endure. <laughs>